Kalai Venakam Eloji de Voneki Tanya Vadalu Muje Asha He Apkushar He Ne Zindo Hun, Mea Chahon Apki Interleska Shukria Me Apsabi Sipia Krata Hun And to those that don't speak Tamil, Telugu, or Hindi, good morning. Thank God for this day. I hope you're doing well. Thank you very much for your interest. I love you all. I just completed my outdoor yoga, so I'm feeling very calm. Yoga works. It's not a question of yoga's credibility. It's only a matter of if the humans are practicing it or not. If you do do yoga, you are benefiting from it. Even if you're not into yoga, I still strongly suggest you develop methods to efficiently balance your own bodily energies as to not give too much of your internal concerns and con internal intertwinings to others. I know a lot of people that can concur with the concept that doing yoga outside is more cleansing. And if you are an individual that self-balances in this way, that is an easy concept to accept. Personally, I have an extreme amount of energy to balance, and I have yoga, dance therapy, and meditation. The yoga is crucial to keeping me calm and grounded and practical in my living and connected to nature. It very much so aids to my respect for all life on the planet, from insects to humans, to water quality to air quality. Yoga keeps me connected with nature. The dance therapy, well, it's a more forceful exertion of the energy in its bodily movements and also in my internal energy focus at the time. And what I mean by that is, it's very common for me, for a quick example, to feel very anxious when I get home from work. So that is usually a great time for me to use dance therapy to just push a bunch of that energy out at once in a matter of 20 minutes of dancing versus trying to get home from work and center into a strong yoga routine. And if you are a human that balances your own energy. Thank you for your dedication to your own well-being. You will be able to accept the concept that the meditation is the most important and that it gets me deeper within and therefore can provide me with a greater degree of peace in my practical living. I don't do yoga every day, but I do meditate every day. And how I was able to work that into such a busy schedule is roughly halfway into my day, which would be 10 hours into my day where I'm awake 20 hours most days, I prioritize 30 to 45 minutes to meditate. 
when anxiety is high. Sometimes my meditation is not as successful, but I always dedicate myself to that 30 minutes. So a little bit every day, I listen to me, remain peaceful about my own perspectives. And in that I can carry on knowing how I feel and knowing what is peaceful to me and hopefully to others. Again, it doesn't have to be yoga, but I strongly suggest you develop methods of balancing your own bodily energy for the sake of your own well-being and those around you. And in reference to true human health and developing your own true health as a human being, it's a triad. And it is very much so a triad effort within your human body. Your mental health, your physical health, and your spiritual health. In your physical health, when you eat the food that nature provided for us as humans to get proper hydration and vital health within well with longevity of that practice you can build up a great credit in your own physical health in that it's strong and it's not going to just drop off on you if you get away from those foods and drinks your health will naturally decline as will your quality of life logistically, practically, and realistically. But if you did stay dedicated to those natural foods and drinks for a really long time, well, you can see how that would build up a really good health protection for yourself. And you would have some leeway there in reference to going a period of time without eating really healthy. And that is very much so a timely process in its design for a reason. You need to earn it. You need to earn your body's respect through your consumption and personal treatment. Now your mental health, your mental health will connect you with the physical world and the other. And your mental health is the bridge between your physical health and your spiritual health. So obviously the mental health being the bridge makes it very crucial but every day is a new opportunity and every moment is to be lived in the moment. So in that, you can build up mental strength and naturally, if you were dedicated to your physical health, <laughs> They got my attention. If you are dedicated, dedicated to your physical health, it will help your mental strength. However, since your mental health is so momentary, it can just snap. It's not like your physical health. Your physical health, once it's built up, it's not gonna just dissipate. Now you can build up a lot of mental health and just have it snap all together in a moment and it can be very influential and detrimental to an individual's life experience. So in that you have your timely process of your physical health dedication 
and your momentary dedication to your own mental health as the bridge to your spiritual health. And in reference to your spiritual health, all of the processes that occur within you, between your brain and your feelings and all this stuff that goes on inside of you, um, that voice you hear of sorts or your own opinions and the ways you think about things that even if you're sitting next to your spouse your whole life, well, that person is not in your head. And so you can give them a lot of what you have in there, but obviously it's still going to be a fraction of what you actually have in there throughout your life. And if you change relationships or you change circumstances, well, that doesn't change to you all the stuff that you've thought and all the stuff that you've experienced within. All of these internal processes that only you have for you and only I have for me. Well, that is your internal world. A lot of people refer to it as your inner child or um, you know, your ego. And I honestly feel like I have a very different understanding of ego. But ultimately, by taking on your own emotional energy balancing in that way, you are also taking responsibility for that inner child that is with you from the time you're born until the time you leave the world. And when you're younger, well, obviously, it's a lot easier to give that inner child to other people, and you're expected to because you need to learn how not to. But once you hit about the age of 25, well, we have a lot of solid evidence that proves that the human brain very much so goes through significant changes at around the age of 25, and things that were harmful in young ages are now useful, and a lot of things go on there. So after the age of 25, that inner child that you're used to giving to other people, well, you need to get that under control. And if you don't, and you're older than 25, and you have a compulsive inner child that's controlling your older adult, people are gonna judge you on that, and you are going to live the perception that comes with that very practically and realistically. So when I discuss developing a healthy spiritual understanding. I'm referring to efficiently keeping your inner child at bay and knowing that inner working that is going on specifically for you, through you, whether it's shared or not, that is your inner world, your spirituality, that we have reason to believe other animals that do not have conscious choice, well, they don't have that same internal working. They will have the physical health and the mental health, but without conscious choice, well, there's no need for the spiritual understanding. But humans very much so need to consciously balance those things for themselves, creating the need for the healthy spiritual understanding, making it crucial for us going forward as peaceful human beings to develop a healthy inner child, inner working, ego, spirituality, whatever it is to you. Again, developing a healthy spirituality can be correlated to having a healthy sexuality in that you just need to understand you and have methods for you. The fine detail of your sexuality and the fine detail of your spirituality doesn't need to be forced on others on the logical understanding that everyone needs their own methods. However, 
And that also explains why there's so many different organized religions that will work. And if you have an organized religion, use it. That perception is very healthy and useful for you in maintaining your inner world and your spirituality. You need to use that. And if you hear of a lot of religions and different paths that don't resonate with your inner child and your own personal spirituality, well, that is okay. The individuals that do use those methods are still remaining peaceful in their methods, and that is ultimately the goal. However, if you're a human, that need still exists, and so I encourage you not to completely abandon your own spirituality as a human being simply because you did not agree with others' methods. There are lots of people that are spiritual and not religious, and it's very common for those people to also accept that people that have religions are remaining peaceful and spiritual within themselves. So, in that comes the awareness for the triad of true human health. The physical health is through your food and consumption. The closer to nature you can be, the more vitally healthy you'll be. It's a timely process, but it's guaranteed to work. Mental health is very momentary and requires developed mental strength to stay in the moment and make strong decisions for yourself in your own life experience. With the option of the choices that specific to humans comes the need for a healthy spiritual understanding, which is your own internal workings and the voices or things that you hear within yourself specific to you. So since the processing of the spirituality occurs in the brain and through the mind, but ultimately felt throughout the chakras, the mental health is acting as a bridge between the physical health and the spiritual health. But with an increased physical health comes the mental strength to maintain the spiritual health as well as the physical health. As I understand it from my life efforts to remain connected with nature in my consumption and balance myself in my attempt to develop true human health. Thank God for my life. Mary Jeevan Gaili Bhagavanga Shikrahe. I strongly appreciate your patronage to my posting efforts and my peaceful intent at this time. In the meantime, Acha khao, acha maha suskaru, muje jana chahi. Tell se, may up se be si pia krata hun. Again, I have to go. Eat good, feel good, create a great day for yourself. I love you all. Sabiko shante. Tell se bagvanga shukrahe. Alveda.